Hi and welcome to the lesson on forces and slanted planes. You'll see a lot of questions in the VCU physics curriculum on forces acting on blocks that are sitting on slanted planes, bikes on slanted planes, things moving up and down slanted planes, and what it's really testing is to see if you can break down a force into components that align with the axes of movement and can you actually identify all the forces acting on a block. So we're going to solve a quick problem. We're going to see how quickly a block slides down a plane that is inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal, which is what I have in front of us here. So let's put in a few figures. This box weighs 50 kilograms. Actually, I'll keep that in. I'll say M equals 50. Therefore, we know it has a weight force acting directly down, which is mg, or 500 newtons. If that were the only force acting on this block, it would travel straight down in that direction. It would at least accelerate in that direction if it was starting from rest. But it's not going to do that. Even a kid would know that this box is going to travel in that direction. So there must be some other force act on, acting on this block which gives it a net force in that direction there. But of course, if the other force was acting in that direction, our net force would be something like that, which is no good at all. So the other force is in fact the normal force, which acts perpendicular to the plane the block, block rests on. Normal force there. <clears throat> and that force, as of right now, is a mystery. We don't know what it is. The first assumption we can make is that the block is not moving off of or into the plane. So the forces on this line here have to cancel each other out. So let's see if we draw this dotted line down here. The gravity force here can be broken down into a, a force acting in this direction this length and a force acting in this direction and since the purple arrow and the red arrow are joined top and tail here and when you join them they make up the gravity force we know that if you add this force and this force it's the same as the gravity force so from now on we can pretty much ignore the gravity force and just focus on these two forces so the first thing we need to recognize is that this, let's get rid of that red, this length here is 500. That's the original weight force. And this angle here is 30 degrees. So this purple component of the weight force is equal to cos, actually we'll say 500 times cos 30 degrees. Now, a lot of people don't understand why this angle here and this angle here are the same. I mean, clearly they're pointing in different directions. The easiest way I think of it is if you drew a number of planes. This one here, a block. This angle here and this angle here, we're saying are equivalent. If we draw another set of planes even bigger, we're making this angle here bigger and when we draw our block, this angle has also become bigger. So you can see they both increase at around the same rate, and that is the clue that they are the same. Where were we? Ah oh, yes, this force here. 500 cos 30 degrees is the gravity force acting in this direction here. And that comes to, what is that? That's 400 and 33 newtons. The gravity force acting parallel to the plane in this direction is 500 sine 30 degrees, which is 500 times a half, which is 250 newtons. So the gravity force, we can either describe it as 500 newtons acting straight down, which doesn't really help us in our problem, or we can describe it as 433 newtons acting perpendicular to the plane and 250 newtons acting parallel to the plane. 
This number, 433, is very useful because as we said before, the block is not moving either off the plane or into the plane. So the forces in this direction must balance the forces in this direction. Therefore, our first equation is the normal force has to equal 433 newtons. This force up here has to equal this force down here. One mystery solved. So we look at the block now. The forces this way balance the forces this way, but the element of the gravity force acting parallel to the plane is unbalanced. The block does have net force this way. So if I sketch the block again, only the net forces, that is the net force there, this component of the gravity force. And that force we said was 250 newtons, that equals the net force. Now the acceleration of the block, which is what we want to find, F equals MA, 250 equals 50A, 5 equals A. So acceleration equals 5 meters per second squared down the plane. Other problems can arise in which the block has some kind of frictional force here, F friction. I might just call that R, resistance. If the block is stationary, that means before we said, hey, there was this unbalanced force acting there and these two are balanced, so we don't include them. If it is stationary, even this force, which is this force down here, has to be balanced and it's balanced by R. So in this example, when we say, hey, this thing is stationary, that implies that the resistance is equal to 250 newtons. And finally, we could make the problem even more difficult. Let's say the normal is always going to be 433. If the block were accelerating down the slant at one meter per second squared, what is the frictional force? Well, the net force always equals MA. And in this case, that equals 50 times 1. So the net force equals 50 newtons in this direction. The net force in this direction is going to be 0. So 50 newtons would have to equal the force here that's pulling the block down the plane, which is 250 newtons, take away the force that's resisting it. R. So I'm saying there's a block here, has one force going this way, one force going this way, but the net force has to be 50 newtons down the plane. And this gives us, if we take 250 from both sides, that's negative 200 equals negative R. Resistance equals 200 newtons. So we just solved the acceleration for the, the um, acceleration for a block without friction, the frictional force for a stationary block, and then the frictional force for a block in motion. I think the number one thing is to understand how to divide up the gravity force into these two components, and then always thinking in these axes here.